Well, we'll start with the ice plants because any soldier who ever trained at Fort Ord will remember the ice plants. We were always told by the drill sergeants, whatever you do, don't step on the ice plants. Because I think even in the 60s, they had a consciousness. And to this day, they still promote keeping natural areas natural. If there's, if there's a protected species in there, you can't train in those areas. Pretty remarkable. So this would have been a generic barracks so I found actually down here a barracks where we can actually go upstairs and see one of the old latrines. Maybe in the 80s or 90s before they closed the post was they put these false partitions in here to give the soldiers some privacy. During the Vietnam era, these, these uh, open bays were just big open spaces. Then over here, Perfectly generic latrine, except the, the only modifications are we didn't have any stalls, so they just had like open toilets. You got used to that pretty quickly. And uh, this would have been uh, what they call a gang shower, which is still pretty intact, but it wouldn't have had that nice tile. So they've obviously, they obviously did some modifications to tart these places up in the 80s and 90s. Basic and AIT, I mean, this, it was a primitive existence, believe me. These would have been the old World War II era buildings. But they were supposed to be temporary, but they weren't torn down after the war and then they were uh, reutilized when the bases were all built up again for Vietnam. And uh, you know nobody knew at the end of World War II that just 20 years later there'd be another gigantic war where almost 60,000 guys died. And someday you men may have to face combat. And someday you're going to be in that situation where you're going to have to have this discipline. And when someone tells you to move, you gotta move or you're dead. They were sort of like little generic units. And you always had, then you had a mess hall too. And I'm guessing down here, if we walk down this way, this probably was a mess hall. This would have all been the kitchen area where they actually prepped the meals. And they would have had like a number of army cooks back here, you know, working away, creating three huge meals from scratch every day. And the cooks had it worse almost than the soldiers because they had to get up like at three in the morning. I've been down to these old areas before, but I've never really walked around and looked around and poked around in some of these old buildings. It's fascinating. Like, you know, the trainees, we would have come in here after a formation, and then one squad or platoon would go upstairs, and the other half would be down here, like maybe two squads. But um, you would come through here, and then this would have all been open. After the draft ended, in the 70s and 80s, they, they partitioned all this off just like they did the other old barracks. The old World War II barracks were reused for Vietnam for later training, like for the what, what we call AIT, Advanced Individual Training. This probably would have been, I'm guessing, two or three man rooms. And they even had their own latrines. Some of them did. This area here was uh, built in the 50s and then it was ready to go to be built up for Vietnam. But the basic training experience was different because it was all in these, these what were pretty new build, buildings. Talk about the ghosts of Vietnam. Carry with them the fears, the common fears and, and quite normal fears of what's going to happen to them. Yeah, basic training was gonna be a generally an excruciating experience. 
They try to break you down mentally. Lack of sleep, the running, you just break down, you submit to it. It still has a combination lock on it. Yeah, it's totally intact old uh, army mess hall from the Vietnam era, clear up into the 90s. Obviously somebody got the bright idea to paint some of those bricks uh, red to make it cheerful. <laughs> it's one thing first sergeants could always do, they could get really creative sometimes. They'd have soldiers go out and paint rocks, and, you know, make things more decorative, and they, they ended up usually being pretty ugly. Here's something kind of interesting. It says broken window, work order uh, by K. Saucier, 22 March 1993. So that's this is like from when it was still an active base in 1993, and they would have reported this broken window to be later. One thing about the Army is um, when they have an inspection, if something is broken or doesn't work, if you have a work order established on it, it can go five years without being repaired, but as long as you have a work order uh, documented, it excuses you for the sake of the inspection. But if you can imagine the energy and the activity in a place like this, like in 1966, um, it was extremely intense and full of purpose. You know, because you had, however long your basic or, or your advanced training was, you had, you know, something like a total of maybe three to four to five months to get it right before you got shipped over to combat. And uh, that's why, you know, the Army in those days, they didn't tolerate any dead wood or anything. If they didn't think you were gonna make it, you got sent home. <laughs>